Welcome back to Kentucky Route Zero. Shannon just recently delivered a package, and while delivering that package, Conway was taken or abducted or whatever by the strangers to work in debt servitude. And then after that, Shannon met up with the others at the diner, and now we've just left the diner and we're back on the boat. See that? Just looks like a swirling mess of garbage, doesn't it? Well, that's what it is. <laughs> I don't know why trash seems to collect right there of all the spots on the lake. It's always been that way. Everyone just navigates around it like it was an island or something. I think I see some desks and chairs swirling around the edge there. Those all-in-one desks like they have in schools, if I remember right. It's been a few years since I saw the inside of one. Those must have washed down from somewhere. I've never known there to be a school on the lake. Oh, there was Gemini School of Beauty. It was run by sisters Cassie and Paula. Indistinguishable except for their haircuts. But I wouldn't think they'd have used desks like that. We used to stop there most every night to let someone off for a cheap haircut. Student stylists, you know. They spared many a sailor the pain of a botched do-it-yourself do. But I guess they got in deep to the power company. Those blow dryers and curling irons burn a lot of coal. It's a shame they had to close down. The haircuts are gone, but the hair keeps growing. Even a couple student stylists were probably put into debt servitude to power consolidated. Yeah, this cluttered place makes a decent local museum. It's as good a history as I could ever tell. We arrived at a small houseboat neighborhood that sometimes hosted concerts for the pleasure of its residents, where Clara was scheduled that night to perform. So either Ezra can stay on the tugboat to help Clara with her performance, or, Junebug and Johnny watch the show from the dockyard with the others. I want to watch the show. I told you... Yeah, you don't have to say it. Only because it's always true. <laughs> she played at the flower shop. Cyrano opened. He was having trouble with his tape machine, so he just droned out on the lap steel. He got really into it, and he went on for, like, forever. Everyone was falling asleep. Not everyone. I remember the air was warm, perfumed. You were playing with some petals you found on the floor, and I was looking at the ceiling. I remember the ceiling was glass. During the week, that room was a greenhouse. I don't know where they put all the plants when they had bands in. Maybe outside, if the weather was nice. It was nice that night. Warm. Smelled like spring. I remember the folding chairs, so uncomfortable, but I guess it was their only option. They had to pack everything up during the week so there'd be room to display the flowers. The 
tape stuff sounds good. That kid's doing a good job. Yep, he's a natural born tape player. I was talking to him back at Salmonitis. He seems a little lost. Another lost soul. Well, he's in good company. Maybe he could... He could travel with us for a bit? Hmm. I'm not sure that's a good idea. We were in the back. Kind of looking around. People watching. I remember... A cat sleeping on a chair. She was a scrawny calico. We'd seen her there before. She must have lived there. I wonder if she preferred the peace and quiet of the daytime flower shop, or the buzz of activity and ear-scratching strangers that came with nighttime concerts. Why do all the best music venues have live-in cats? I would have been content just to sit in that folding chair and drift on Serrano's lap steel sound waves, but you were feeling restless, so we went for a walk. If I sound hesitant or something, it's just... When I met you, when we met, we were nothing. Just these little gray shadows. And we grew and filled in and... But we did all that together. Ezra, sure, he's just a kid, but he's already a person. What would that do to our system? Our chemistry? We took a wrong turn in the hallway and ended up in the basement. I remember the air was cool and damp like a cave. I remember the lingering perfume of the greenhouse giving way to an earthy plant smell like we were digging down into the roots. A grimy door in the corner caught my eye. I remember the door was stuck. There was a large gap underneath it. You reached your arm under the door. You came back with a handful of dirt and confetti. I shined a light under the door. Through the gap I could see brightly colored paper. You forced the door. It wasn't as stuck as we thought. The door burst open and we fell through. Hey, I got the masters for the new record back from Lazar. They're okay, but I... What? You listened to them without me? You were at the pet shop. I didn't think I could tear you free. Oh, okay. Anyway, there are a few spots where the strings distort it a little, and the whole thing has way too much reverb. But overall, it sounds pretty good. The new drum machine fits right into the mix. Nice. The only question is how to do it live. I can't control the drum, machi drum machine and sing and dance at the same time, and you've got your hands full of guitar. We switched on the lights. The room was crowded with colorful wreaths for births, quinceañeras, weddings, funerals. Celebratory wreaths, but there was something kind of sad about it. We got back to the greenhouse just as Clara was tuning up. She relaxed her shoulders, took a deep breath, raised both hands into their precise positions, and the room started shaking. Clara hit a note that made the glass rattle in sympathy a perfect two octaves lower. She looked like a sorceress, tearing down the building with an effortless wave and incredible focus coaxing the empty air into some kind of moaning, rattling demon. That's the thing about the theremin. It's the only instrument you never touch. You could see a wave of concern propagating through the greenhouse, people looking up at the trembling glass ceiling, looking at each other to see if anyone else was worried, trying to catch Clara's eye and discern if she was doing it on purpose or not. 
if she were really trying to bury us all in glass. So how do you think we'll swing that, playing the drum machine live? We'll figure something out. Maybe glue it to the back of your guitar? Oh, yeah. Or swap the buttons out for foot pedals. Or put the drums on tape beforehand, like Serrano does. Oh, yeah. Guess we have a lot of options. Life is full of possibilities, Cricket. Yes, ma'am. It was a tense five minutes. We, the audience, alternated between fearing for our lives and lamenting hers that could have given her the kind of emotional experience to play this devastating song. Then slowly, gently, Clara's hands came to rest. The theremin went quiet. The glass stopped rattling. And the room relaxed, unharmed. I met a photographer once. I mean, one in particular. She even took my portrait. Can't imagine why. She said it would immortalize me. That was a metaphor, of course. She meant I'd never be forgotten. She was disembarking. Not far from here, actually. The film fell out of her bag and was borne away by the current. I was working on deck at the time. She shot me a sad, apologetic glance, but I wasn't bothered. It's no shame to be forgotten. Our passengers, two lighter, disembarked at the mail stop by the silo. They couldn't seem to get that old truck started up again, but we managed to roll it off the barge with only a minor scrape or two. At the last minute, Clara decided to travel with them for a while. Kate and I said goodbye to our friends, new and old, and the mucky mammoth rumbled on down the echo. Goodbye. I'm gonna miss the mucky mammoth. What's this place like? Dogwood Drive. It's in a small town, or... It... I really don't know. I've got the manifest the old man had in his truck here. Reading. Lysette's Antiques. Mail order delivery. No return address. Shipping address 5 Dogwood Drive. Packing list. And then it's just numbers. I guess the inventory numbers of the antiques he was supposed to be delivering. Anyway, I'm glad you're coming with us. Yes, I'm always eager to see more of the country, and I enjoy the company. I'll have to find a bus or a train to get on the Nashville by evening. Well, they have buses everywhere, right? Or, hey, I could drive you to Nashville. Seems I have a truck now, only... How are we going to get it up these stairs? <laughs> <laughs> Good question. Hmm. That's quite a staircase. Um. Something we could do with rope? Sure, can think of a few things. Nothing that'll get that truck up the staircase, though. Looks like we're making the rest of this trip on foot. Is it safe to just leave the truck here? Sure. Don't think anyone but us could get it started again. To Johnny? Alright, Cricket. Let's get this delivery packed and tied in a bundles. We're hiking it upstairs. What's in there? Antiques, I guess. Antiques. Yeah, antiques are... It's like junk, but people will pay for it. 
<laughs> Pretty much, I guess. Oh. To Clara. Uh, sorry, I guess you'll be taking the bus after all. It's okay. It'll be an adventure. Shannon sighs and stretches. Tired? Don't worry, lady. We're almost there. I feel like this might be the end of the act. Look at those stairs. What's happening? Yeah, that's the end. Okay, so that is the end of Act 4. Um, again, this is a five-act series. And Act 5 has not been released yet, but is supposed to come out sometime in early 2018. Which, I mean, early 2018 only lasts at the time of recording. Only lasts for another month or two. So it should hopefully be coming out quite soon. However, I'm not just going to stop here. Um, I want to replay Act 4 and do the opposite options on the river, because we kept coming to a stop and we were presented with two options each time. And I'm going to do the opposite options. So, let's actually, because this is such a short episode already, let's actually just restart it right now and I'll bring you back when I get to the first option. Here we go, so here's our first option. The stop at the gas station. You can either stay on the tugboat, look around the map room as Ezra, which is what we did before. And this is the other option, let's do it. Let's follow Junebug and Johnny into the gas station. Yeah, this Act 4 is massive. I mean, it's basically like, it's just one playthrough of it is already bigger than probably any of the other acts, I think. And to boot, you can replay it, and it's basically twice as long. Like, that's amazing. No wonder it took them two years to get Act 4 out after the release of Act 3. We got it close. I usually find this place upriver. Everybody's on the lake tonight. Running on fumes? Yeah, it's this little game I play. I try to get the needle all the way down before I fill it back up. Like playing chicken with the fuel gauge. That's not a good game, Kate. Don't do that. Sounds ridiculous, right? Sounds... efficient. It may be. I never thought of that. Anyway, it's nice to see you two. Most of my regular passengers must have gotten held up elsewhere in their journey tonight. It's that storm, I think. Watching Ezra sprint past. <laughs> Look at him go. That kid has a lot of energy. It's gotta be past his bedtime or something, right? I don't think he has a bedtime. He's a maverick. Sounds familiar. You don't have any... of your own, I mean. Uh, no, I, I guess not. I just realized. You two come through here so often. We chat about all kinds of stuff, but I never thought to ask about family. We're all the family we need. That's sweet. So, how about that storm upstairs? Did you two get caught in it? I heard it kind of roamed around, uncertain. I'm sure we'll hear all about it tomorrow. Flooding, property damage, probably killed a few tomatoes. It's got the river churning and everyone headed to the lake here, where the water's calmer. I myself don't mind navigating a choppy river. Not at all. I've got a good feel for it. Plus, it's better for fungal growth. High water consumes the cave moths, and their wet wings clump together into these little balls of nutrient-dense mushroom food, jammed by a current here and there between the rocks. You've never seen a mushroom grow like on a soggy cave moth carcass. Amazing. 
If I could get a day off, Val and I'd be out there all day tomorrow to harvest. I mean it. They'll be ready by tomorrow. The mushroom will grow just as fast as you can pump water into it. Hey, are you two headed out this way tomorrow? Maybe I could send Val ashore with you for a few hours. She's got a remarkable nose for mushrooms. You wouldn't even need to know what to look for. Put a bag around her neck and she'll just bring them back to you. Oh my god, you have a, a mushroom hunting dog? That's a talented pupper. Yeah. No room on the bike for a dog, Cricket. She could curl up in the sidecar. I'll sit on my legs. Silence. So... I should get back aboard. No rush, I just want to brew some tea before we get underway. Headed into the station? Yeah, picking out a snack for Johnny. To Johnny? She doesn't let you pick out your own snacks? To Kate? It's for the best. I get a little overwhelmed by all these, all those shelves of candy. Too much of a good thing. Hey, while you're in there, could you remind the gas station attendant this fuel is on my tab? Charge to the Mucky Mammoth. Oh, and Will wanted a scratch ticket. Thanks. To Junebug? I think I'll just watch the lake for a bit, ma'am. I don't think we've... Have we gotten to play as Junebug before? It's interesting just to listen to Junebug's uh, motors, I guess. Hmm. It's interesting. I can wonder how much of them is robotic. I don't know. Is that a boat going by? Oh, there's a bunch of things going by. <laughs> Someone on some tiny little... It doesn't even look like a boat, it just looks like a slab of wood or something. Let's go inside. Um... Johnny and Phil? What do you think of that other dog we've got on board, Val? Blue's a sleepy old hound dog. I know she isn't doing any mushroom hunting, that's for sure. Weird cave fungus growing on soggy moth wings. Sounds kind of romantic, but also kind of gross, right? So, would you like to ride with us for a day? I bet you would. We're good company. Maybe we can still talk her into it. Looking for crystals? Crystals? Why do you assume I'm looking for crystals? We've got them on sale. All kinds of folks come in here looking for crystals. There's a few over there with milky white shocks through the middle. Like you got a piece of a cloud. People seem to like those a lot. Yep. Popular crystals. You work on the mammoth? I can add it to your tab. Oh, you know the tugboat? Uh, the captain, Kate, said I'd have to remind you. Sure, they're here every night. It's okay. I have one of those faces. Forgettable. Does it bother you? I've learned to cherish it. There's dignity in being forgotten. Letting the crowd flow around you unspoiled. That's funny, that's similar to... 
something that Kate said, isn't it, about the photograph? Being lost in the water. There's dignity in being forgotten. I used to live in a city. Uh, I mean, a real city. Cleveland, Ohio. I had some family money then. And I didn't have to work. I lived in hotels. In daylight, I walked wherever the people were. My only duty was to the crowd. I was its observer, its historian, its detective, its poet. Well, the money ran out. And I dispersed with the rest of them. I took my duties with me here to Lake Leth and the Echo River. I live behind this counter, anonymous, invisible, but I live with dignity. And yourself? No, I don't think so. I don't blend in. Hmm. And not so easy to forget, I'd say. I see now that you're right. Well, that's yours to bear, then. We'll keep all the crystals on that shelf over there. Buy one, get one free. Of equal or lesser symmetry. <laughs> the crystals are rough, dirty. Some are damp. They must have come out of the river. Johnny seemed distant. He was excited about Kate's dog, too. Junebug tries to scrape some green algae off a larger specimen, examining it for the kind of cloudy inner formation the attendant said was so popular. What would it be like to travel with one more? Some letters and a few numbers are woven through the algae. It may be best just to ask him what's on his mind. This isn't algae at all. It's a decayed plastic bag caught on the rock. To attendant. Shit, that flood water washed you halfway out to the sea. I was looking for you down by New Konisberg, same as usual, but ain't nobody there. And the river's deep as an elephant's. Noticing Junebug. Oh, didn't see you there, ma'am. Pardon my language. What elephant? <laughs> Alright. You're no paper flower, I see that. Extending his hand warmly. I expect you must be Loretta. Enchanted to meet you. Sorry I'm late. Uh, hey, is that coming on too flowery or something? Enchanted. Repeating it now, I feel a little silly. Enchanted sounds pretty old-fashioned. Was that the kind of gal Loretta is? Hmm. I guess I don't know. But now I'm double embarrassed. You picked a funny place to meet. You're probably right about that. I guess I thought it'd be, like, neutral territory, and we both live on the river. It's not very romantic, though, is it? I met Loretta on the computer. We met each other there, I mean. Or, I guess we spoke through the computer and agreed to meet. I don't know the terminology. Haven't dated in quite a while. Back when I met Greta, uh, that's my wife, uh, excuse me, my ex. Or maybe I am her ex. I don't know how to say it. Anyway, back then there wasn't even such a thing as computers at all. I mean, I guess there probably was, but I never heard of one. I worked in textiles. So here I am. So what's your plan when Loretta shows up? Oh, uh, maybe head down to the rum colony. Shoot, I forgot to ask if she likes to drink. You really never know these days. I guess first I'd ask her about that. If she doesn't like rum, I'd maybe try to take her by the Bat Sanctuary. It's pretty romantic, in a sense. I mean, like, misty valleys and ruined churches romantic. Not like flowers and chocolates romantic. Of course, they've got that memorial there. That's a little depressing, actually. Maybe we'd kind of sail around that. Ah, damn it all, I guess I probably missed her. 
wonder if she'll agree to meet me again. I'm sure she'll understand with the weather and all. Nice of you to say so. Well, guess I'll head on back. Hey, uh, supposing the redhead doesn't want to see me after all. Uh, my card is full. Oh, no, sorry, that's not what I meant. Um, actually, I wanted to ask you for some advice. I had to type up a sort of autobiography for the computer date, and I spent a lot of time in it, but I only got one reply. And that was Loretta herself. I was happy to meet her, but supposing she's lost interest now. Do you think you could maybe give me some feedback? It's only a paragraph or so. I have it all memorized. I spent so damn long writing it. Okay. Here's how it goes. <laughs> this should be interesting. I'm a good-natured man, retired and spend most of my time sailing the Echo River, riding currents of subterranean gas and that strange invisible wind that moans out of the small tunnels along the bank. Seeking a companion to map the river with me. I have two grown children, but they live far away. No goofballs. Okay. What do you think? What was that about goofballs? I mean, like, serious inquiries only. She might miss out on some really great goofballs. <laughs> you may be right about that. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you'll be fine. Alright. Thanks for your help, ma'am. Really renewed my confidence. I'm ready to get back on that computer. You have a good night now. What's left of it, anyway? So, did I get the snacks and... and the scratch ticket for Will? I'm just going to assume I did, because I don't seem to have any option to do it. What's that? It's a crystal. I bought it for you. Wow. Thank you, ma'am. Hey, could you hold on to it for a minute? I'm going to look around inside. Wish me luck. Good luck. Ah. Oh. Now we get to play as Johnny, so maybe they're going to grab the snacks and stuff. Although I thought they said they couldn't be trusted with <laughs> buying anything. Did my Johnny talk your ear off out here? Nah, no, that's not that's that. Big plans for the night. I think I'll just see where the river goes and at what pace. You look like you've got that figured out already, Val. Where did these crystals come from? There used to be a young man who came by here and traded them for gas. He's a diver. I guess he found them diving. I haven't seen him in a while, though. That right there could be the last of them. To be honest, our whole inventory is pretty low right now. There's a delivery boat that usually swings by earlier in the night, but I guess something came up. Where are you headed? Helping some new friends make a delivery. Or along for the ride, anyway. Well, even if you're not doing the heavy lifting, or navigating or whatever, a passenger contributes to a journey, too. I never travel, but I do love travelers. That's what I like about this job. Travelers come to me. Meet some interesting people. I wouldn't say I meet them, but I do sell them gas. Well, let me know if I can help you find anything. Who's this person now? What the hell? Are they yelling this at me? 
No spaces, all caps, glory, it is good to be among friends. Suit yourself. What are you so excited about? I can't help it. Every time I step onto that boat alone, I think, this could be the very last time. And then every time I come ashore back among people, I think, glory, it is good to be among friends. Why well, get on the boat in the first place? It's a ritual of remembrance for me. Tonight particularly so. It's my birthday. I'm five years old. <laughs> what? <laughs> Do you know why I say that? Well, I'm going to tell you. Five years and some days ago, I set out on the Echo River. Alone, or so I thought at the time. I was looking for an ice flow. They're occasionally rumored to travel our humble artery on their way from who knows where to who knows where. Who knows why? It's a mystery. An hour into the journey, my lantern gave out. Now, I always carry three or four spares. You'll never catch me in the dark again. Listen, learn, buddy. But that night, when that lantern went out, I was stuck in the dark. I kept my arm extended, running my fingers along the cave wall, trying to keep my bearing as best I could and at least make sure I wasn't going in circles. I just prayed I'd find another traveler who knew his way back to the lake or above ground, or even just a crack in the rock to get a glimpse of moonlight. I had a large bag of apples with me. After a long while, maybe a day, I was getting weak, so I took my hand down from the rock to tear the bag open. Well, when I reached back out, I couldn't find that cave wall anymore, or any other. I was totally unmoored, buddy, totally adrift. And it was so dark. I started counting time in apples eaten. I drifted in despair for four apples, then I schemed and planned and dreamed for two apples. Finally, I came to accept my fate, lost at sea. And this phase, I think, would have continued indefinitely had I not come down to that very last damn apple. Picture me, feeling around in the empty bag, certain that somehow there was another one of those fist-sized chunks of life-giving fruit, already softened by time and probably an unappetizing brown. Nope, that was it. Just as I was about to bite into my last meal, I felt a tickle on my upper lip. It hatched right then. Couldn't have been a moment later or would have eaten it. My last apple was infested by a damn fruit fly maggot. Well, that should have been the end of it. I should have eaten that apple and that fly while I was at it. I put an end to our little food chain suicide pact, but I waited out of mercy. After all, this fly was basically a newborn child, right? A gross insect child, but still a child, right? Born into darkness and famine, hungry and alone. I mean, can you imagine that? No other flies out there on the boat? There never would be. No other flies to welcome him into the world, I mean. No fly culture, no fly society, no fly history. A true orphan. I started to get depressed just thinking about it all. Worked out a thick tear, I'm not ashamed to say. Well, that fly landed on my cheek, right under my left eye, right in that salty teardrop, and then, blinding glory, his ass lit up like a candle. That wasn't a fly, buddy, that was a damn lightning bug. So, that's how come I'm here today with you folks, only because I found my way out of that strange river cave by the dim-lit rear of some orphan insect hatched out of my last rotten apple. Glory, it is good to be among friends. <laughs> It's quite a story. Wow. That guy's a trip. A gas station attendant. Did you talk to him? It's funny. He actually reminds me of that frog we had for a bit. I thought it was a toad. Oh. Is there a difference? Uh, <laughs> toads live in the mud. Frogs live in trees. I don't think that's true. Toads are bigger? I don't know. Huh. I never knew. Okay, so how does that gas station attendant remind you of a frog? 
Oh, I don't know. Because he liked to talk, I guess. Maybe we should pick up another one. A frog, or a cat, or an iguana, or something. Yeah, definitely something's going on with Johnny. Hmm. Feeling lonely, Cricket? Not exactly. Not like that guy in the gas station. That guy lets the world wash over him. Static like a rock. But I, you and me both together, I mean, we're always moving, always changing. I think it's because we feel safe with each other, you know? Free. We can try stuff out. Change our clothes, swap parts around, just play. I'm not lonely, just curious. With another person to play with, what else could we be? You may be right, Cricket. You really think so? Wow. I thought I'd have to wear you down a little. Like I did with the gerbils. Oh, that's Kate. Time to hit the road. A river, I mean. This game is really good. <laughs> I love it. I can just go back and replay this entire thing and it's like, just basically double the act. And I'm seeing a whole other side to everything that was happening. Like, I had no idea that Johnny was feeling this way. But now that I'm playing the other side, I get to see it. What else are we going to discover doing the other option? All right, well, I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, we're going to continue on down the river, picking the options we have not picked.